Hey Diane, I was wondering if maybe you had a 640-280-24 orchestral in stock? Or maybe a 265-24 back bore? Uh, and then also maybe an orchestral 645-R6 rim? If you've ever seen or played a Park mouthpiece, you've been exposed to their extremely technical and long-winded naming scheme. In this video, I'll demystify their naming convention and explain how their sizing system works. Park mouthpieces are considered legendary in the orchestral trumpet community. Some of our era's finest orchestral trumpet players perform on a park, and their popularity continues to grow among many serious trumpet players. Most of you are probably familiar with Bach mouthpieces. You know, 3C, 5B, 7E. But what do these numbers and letters actually mean? Common understanding is that the number directly relates to the diameter, and the letter refers to the depth. That isn't entirely wrong, but it's a little sticky when we compare the actual specs of individual mouthpieces to one another. I've seen 5Bs that had a wider inner diameter than 3Cs. I've seen a 5A that was even as wide as a 1C. There are so many more differences between these models that aren't even indicated at all by their name, including the contour of the rim, the shape of the cup, and the size of the throat and back bore. Many times, different vintages of the same model even have completely different characteristics. Park mouthpieces follow a much different naming convention. On its face, it may seem more complicated, but it is actually quite logical and exceedingly specific. If you know the name of a Park mouthpiece, you know exactly what you're getting without having to guess or measure anything at all. There are two parts to the name of each Park mouthpiece, the model and the dimensions. The model tells us the design or shape of the rim, cup, and back bore, but not the size. Because each model can be customized by scaling the sizes of each element up and down, every model name is followed by three numbers which refer to the dimensions. The first number refers to the rim diameter, the second, the cup depth, and the third is the throat size. If you see another number printed on just your back bore, that refers to the average bore size of the back bore, and the throat size to pair it with. Okay, let's dig into the different models of park mouthpieces that you may run into. The most common model you'll see is the Orchestral Series, which was also called the Merkello until 10 to 15 years ago. The very first orchestral mouthpiece was a mouthpiece copy that was made for Paul Merkello, principal trumpet of the Montreal Symphony. He wanted a one-piece mouthpiece with the following specifications. A Bach 1X style rim, which is flatter and has more of a bite than other Bach rims, a 5B cup, 24 throat, and a back bore that is just a bit smaller than the Bach 24 back bore. It turns out that people liked this mouthpiece design a lot and started asking for it in lots of different sizes and depths. To this day, it is by far their most popular and widely sold mouthpiece model. You may also see the Hagstrom series, originally designed for John Hagstrom, second trumpet of the Chicago Symphony, which featured these specifications. A custom rim from Vince DiMartino, which was a little bit smaller than a Bach 7E diameter and very cushioned, a Bach 1B cup, a 26 throat, and the backbore was a specific Bach Symphonic 24 backbore that John had in his collection, which he handpicked from 10 slightly different Bach Symphonic 24 backbores. A thing to note about the Hagstrom is its distinctive design, which features an undercut due to the rim, again, being a little smaller in diameter than a Bach 7E, being so much smaller than the cup, which was a 1B. Also, all of the Hagstrom mouthpieces are made from annealed or heat-treated brass and are slightly longer in overall length. There were also models made for Wayne Bergeron, Rick Baptist, and Rick Henley, which were commercial models based on very custom mouthpieces, but these are not seen very often as they were only made in the early 2000s. Remember, the model name only tells you the overall design, shape, and contour of the mouthpiece, but not the size. So even though the original Park Orchestral mouthpiece had a 1x size and shaped rim, the actual dimensions will be revealed by our next topic, how to interpret the numbers that tell you the dimensions of the mouthpiece. The rim measurement refers to the diameter of the rim of the mouthpiece, measured in thousandths of an inch. The park mouthpieces measure the rim from the point where the rim and cup meet on a Bach threaded mouthpiece. This method of measuring the diameter at the rim cup meeting point leads to a bit of confusion when comparing these numbers to a catalog of specifications for Bach mouthpieces, which measure the inner diameter at the rim versus park mouthpieces, with the Bach measurements seeming bigger because of the contour of the cup towards the rim. The most commonly seen rim sizes are 640, which is a 1.5C inner diameter, a 650, which is about a 1.25C diameter, and a 645, which is an in-between size that has become popular in the last few years. 
Other somewhat common sizes include the 630, which is most similar to a 3C inner diameter, and also the 655, which was the size of the original 1X rim that inspired the orchestral style rim. There are more sizes out there floating around, but these are by far the most common. Personally, I also have 610 and 620 orchestral screw rims, which are most similar to a 10.5C diameter and 7E diameter respectively. I have the 610 rim screwed onto a Mount Vernon 10.5C underpart, and I have the 620 screwed onto a 5B underpart. I even have a 660 rim mouthpiece, which is closest to a Bach 1C diameter. The most important thing to remember about the rim sizes is that the number only tells you the actual inner diameter and not the shape or contour of the rim. In the case of the orchestral, all of those rims are the Bach 1X style rim, with the inner diameter scaled proportionately wider or narrower. The cup depths refer to the average cup depth across the diameter of the mouthpiece. It takes into account all points along the curve of the cup, resulting in an average distance between the rim and the bottom of the cup, again in thousandths of an inch. This provides a more accurate measurement which incorporates more information, and can be used to represent the actual volume of the cup, and not just the depth in the middle. The most common orchestral cup depth sizes are a 270, which is a 3C depth, 275, which is a 1.5C depth, 280, which is a 1C depth, a 285, which is a 5B depth, and 290, which is a 1B depth. The smaller the number, the shallower the cup. I've also seen mouthpieces in the 240 depth, which is an E cup, and a 260 depth, which is a D cup. The throat is the size of the hole that connects the bottom of the cup to the backbore. This size actually basically references a drill size, so this is the one measurement that is not in thousandths of an inch. The smaller the number, the bigger the throat. The orchestral is almost always in a 24 throat, but is also offered in a 25 or 26 throat. The Hagstrom is usually in a 26 throat, but 24 throat versions have been made for certain players. The Henley was made in a 28, the Baptist in a 27, and the Bergeron in a 26 throat. There are a few different naming conventions for backboards that you might see. The most common simply says Orchestral 24. This refers to the standard orchestral backbore with a 24 throat, which is again slightly smaller than a Bach 24 backbore. You may also see a single letter, a C for commercial, an M for medium, or an S for symphonic, again followed by a throat size. Each of these backbores were original creations designed by Jeff Park himself. The other backbore nomenclature you'll see simply shows the backbore measurement number, followed by the throat size. These are scaled up and down versions of the C, M, and S backbores, sort of like in-between sizes. The backbore dimension is the average bore size, which is a two-dimensional measurement of the profile or cutaway view of the backbore, measured in thousandths of an inch. This dimension can give you an idea of the volume, but when you compare backbores that have drastically different shapes, but similar overall size, the distinction between the average bore size and volume can be kind of significant. Let's take a look at the comparison chart. For example, a commercial 24 backbore has an average bore size of 216. The 240 24 has the average bore size in its name, which is 240, which is around the same size as a Bach 10. A good example of the distinction between the average bore size and the shape is the difference between the M24 and Hagstrom 24 backbores. Both of them have an average bore size of 248, but because their interior contour is different, they have different playing characteristics. The orchestral 24 backbore comes in at an average bore size of 250, which is a bit smaller than a regular Bach 24 backbore, which would come in around a 255. I also personally have the 265 and S24 backbores, which are really useful for rotary trumpet playing. The S comes in at an average backbore size of 280. They also offer their most popular backbore, the Orchestral 24, in a cornet shank. Now that we've explained what all these numbers mean, I can tell you what the original dimensions were of each of the mouthpiece models when they were made for their artists. If you stayed with me up to this point, you definitely deserve some kind of mouthpiece award. So congratulations. So far, we've covered all the basic naming conventions in the Park mouthpiece world, and what each of the numbers actually mean. If you stick around to the end of the video, we'll practice decoding some of these mouthpieces with a few examples. Now, we'll take a step into the complicated world of additional variations. These are not necessarily produced en masse or even available to buy anymore, but have been made in the past and sometimes are still seen for sale. First, we'll start with the rim variations. 
The most common of all the variations is the relatively recently developed orchestral R6 rim, which is just slightly more rounded on the inner edge than the standard orchestral rim. Less common is the R8, which is even rounder still. On some rims, you may see a second three-digit number, which indicates the cushion size. For example, this here is a 610-215 orchestral rim, which means it has a cushion size of 215, but also has been produced in a 220, which has a slightly larger flat section. The rim cushion variations are done by stretching or compressing the rim contour, from the high point of the rim to the outside diameter, so as not to change the bite and the perception of the inner diameter. All park mouthpiece rims technically have a cushion measurement, but this isn't usually notated on the mouthpiece. Just for comparison, the typical orchestral rim has a 215 cushion, the Hegstrom and Bergeron rims have a 225 cushion, and the Baptist and Henley models have a 240 cushion. As the number gets bigger, the mouthpiece rim has a larger flat section. Now we'll move on to the cup variations. A V indicates it is a more V-shaped cup design than the original. You may also see a C2 through C5, which all indicate a more C or bowl-shaped cup than the original. The higher the number, the more C-shaped it is. You'll probably not come across this notation very often, because they only did them for a little while. An extremely rare variant of this system will give two numbers, which are the ratio of Cenus to Venus. The original orchestral was a 55-45 C to V ratio, but they have also made some that were in 42-58, 46-54, etc. This is a testament to their commitment to specificity when it comes to describing the characteristics and dimensions of their customized mouthpieces. Sometimes you'll see the word bronze printed on a part. While almost all park mouthpieces are made from regular brass, there was a period where they were producing bronze components as well, which you will see notated directly on the component. Apparently, they also have experiments with copper, but I haven't actually seen any of these for sale before. If you see an A on your park orchestra mouthpiece, that means it is one of a limited run of annealed or heat-treated one-piece mouthpieces that they made in the orchestral style about 15 years ago. For me personally, my favorite mouthpieces I've ever played were park orchestral annealed mouthpieces. Even though there's no A notating it, all Park Hagstrom mouthpieces come annealed. And finally, we have the component structure. All Park mouthpieces made today are made in a three-piece variety, a separate rim, cup, and backbore that are all threaded to fit together. On the used market, you'll see all kinds of variations they've produced over the years, including mouthpiece top and backbore, rim and underpart, and one-piece variations. Whenever I see a one-piece Park mouthpiece for sale, I try to get it because they're actually pretty rare now. Now that you speak the language, let's practice with a few examples. Okay, first up, we've got an orchestral 640-280-24. That means it has the 1X style rim, but at the 640 diameter, which is around a 1.5C diameter. The 280 cup, which is a 1C depth, but again, based on the 5B cup, and then a 24 throat and the orchestral backbore. Easy, let's try another one. Okay, next up, we've got an orchestral 660-290-24A. The 660 means it's a 1C diameter, but again in the 1X style. The 290 is the 1B depth, but again the 5B style for the orchestral. And then 24 throat and orchestral backbore. The A means it's annealed or heat treated brass, one of my favorites. Here we've got an interesting one. This one is a Merkello 630-270-24 with an M24 backbore. Well, Merkello is what they used to call the orchestral series, which means that this mouthpiece is at least 10 to 15 years old. The 630 means it's in the 3C diameter, but again, with the 1X shape that is typical with a Merkello. The 270 cup is the 3C depth, but it is again in the 5B shape, just a little bit shallower. And then 24 throat, and then the backbore being an M, which is Jeff Park's personal design of the medium backbore, which measures it at an average bore size of 248 and a throat size of 24 to match the top. Okay, let's try a tricky one. This one is a Hagstrom 630-260-26 with a 260-26 backbore. Well, first of all, the Hagstrom indicates that the rim style is the Vince DiMartino cushioned rim that started out as smaller than a 7, but in this case is in the 630 diameter, which is closest to a 3C diameter. The cup is actually at a D cup depth, but is a 1B style. So imagine a 1B cup, but a lot shallower. And then 26 throat. The backbore is a 260-26, which means that the average bore size is 260, and that this backbore was designed by Jeff Park himself with a 26 throat. Okay, let's do one more for good luck. Now we've got a Park 640-285-24 with an orchestral 24 cornet shank backbore. The 640 is again the 1.5C diameter in the 1X style, 
The 285 cup is the 5B style and 5B depth, and the 24 throat and the orchestral cornet backbore pair it up for a nice, easy to transition to cornet mouthpiece. I was so thankful to have Jeff and Diane Park help me with verifying much of the information for this video. Their work creating and refining mouthpieces is in many ways unmatched, and I have been so lucky to play their wonderful mouthpieces for many years. Big thanks to them for letting me visit them a few years ago and spending a few wonderful hours talking about mouthpieces, as well as on many phone calls since. A number of the pictures in today's video were taken by their daughter, professional photographer Janice Beverly. A link to her Instagram page is in the description. Also, go ahead and check out Park Mouthpiece Center on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you found this video useful. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations, you are officially a mouthpiece nerd just like me. Like and subscribe for more nerdy trumpet content. New videos every Tuesday.